Hi everybody, this is Dr. Susan Brown, Director of the Center for Better Bones. Today is Wednesday after Christmas, and I'm going to take a little bit of time to answer some of the questions we've been sent on Facebook. I also want to mention, I'm here geared in my weighted vest that we use to try to build bone strength. I love to exercise in the weighted vest, to walk in the weighted vest, and sometimes I even sit down in the weighted vest. Actually, but I'm going to tell you that January 8th, I, you will see us on Facebook, uh, Gina is offering on Exercise Evolution a discussion, a whole class on how to use the weighted vest to build strength. And I'm going to give a little bit of discussion. I've just filmed a little video on using the weighted vest to build bone strength, which is going to show up on Facebook January 8th. So you might catch that right fresh into the new year. But now, while we're still in 2017, I want to answer some questions that came to us in 2017. And some of those pertain to exercise. The first series are about this machine called the Biodensity Machine. Several people have written to ask me, what do I think of these machines? Can you really build bone density with these machines? If you haven't heard about these machines, you probably will, because the franchise has been started to send senders to establish centers all over the country where people can go and subscribe to these clubs, use these machines. Now, this is a machine a big exercise machine that you get fitted in, very specially fitted, and it has as you do just four simple exercises, pushing as hard as you can with your upper body, pushing with your legs, a, 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 a pull down, four simple exercises that we'll be telling you more about in the Exercise Evolution channel, actually. But those exercises put a great deal of load on the bone. And the thing that will dramatically build bone with exercises, osteogenic load. Now, I've written blogs about it. I'm not going to go in great detail here, but I am going to say that the bone density machines are interesting. I've looked carefully at the literature. There's very few studies to date. There was recently one study that came out with 15 people, did the machine for a year, 15 minutes a week only, just once a week exercise program, that is supposed to send enough load to the bone, enough force, enough bending of the bone to send the signal to build bone. So of those 15 people, 11 showed improvement in their bone density. Two, I believe it was, um, showed further decrease, and three had no significant change. So two-thirds of the people seemed to have some benefit. I had a client who used the machine right along with the Better Bones program, did all the supplements, all the exercise, all the suggestions, all the pH balancing, and she gained a little bit of bone. I'm not sure if she gained a lot more than she would have with her regular exercise program. And we did get a, we did get a comment from a woman uh, who uh, had said she had been using the bone density for a year, and she was really disappointed because she didn't gain bone. She comments, this was Sally. She says, after a year on the bone density machine, my osteoporosis neither increased nor decreased. Very disappointing. There was no increase in bone density after doing this once a week. My diet is good, my vitamin D is very good, and I also go to the gym for weights and walk a lot. Any suggestions or comments? So, in the first place, I'd say, you know, be sure to do the whole Better Bones program. Do the nutrients just as we prescribed, all the 20 key bone nutrients plus. Do, make sure your pH is in balance. Do the stress reduction and check to see you don't have any secondary cause for bone loss. But since your bone didn't change much, um, that's a good sign in a sense that most women are losing bone as they get older. But nonetheless, it's not a dramatic success, success for the biodensity machine. Just to say that the Australian group that I blogged about recently, the Australian Bone Clinic, is doing a really fantastic study comparing their exercise program. If you read the blog, you remember it was traditional strength training, four or five exercises with weights. The women they've been working with have built quite a bit of bone. Twice a week, half an hour exercise with weights, having somebody there supervised to make sure they had the right forms. So the Australian group, with their more traditional weightlifting, is comparing their program to this biodensity program. They're going to take, they're going to work with men, but still it's a very complete study looking to see 
how this traditional workout that they've established with a great deal of success compares to the biodensity. And it's kind of like a challenge. Let's see how it goes. So in about a year, we should have more information on that. In the meantime, if you decide to do the biodensity test, be sure, and you go and you do it for a year and you have bone density reports, be sure to get back to us. We're really interested in that. So another question about exercise uh, is from Lauren, Laurel, who asks about the vibrating platforms. I personally like the vibrating platforms. I have one here in the office at the Center for Better Bones. The one we have in the office is very similar to the power plate. It's called the hypergravity. And it definitely, you definitely feel an up and down motion. It's probably three millimeters of up and down. So you really feel that you're shaken up on that. Um, not everybody, not everybody likes it because you definitely feel the shake and you have to be careful not to shake your head too much. Those machines, I have looked at hundreds of studies, and I'm confident saying that about half the time they seem to help in building bone density. Those machines that give you kind of a significant vibration up and down, and they're used by bodybuilders, by strength trainers. The setting you usually use is like 30 hertz, which what that means is the muscles are caused to fire 30 times a second. So you can quickly tire the muscles because you're using it 30 times a second firing. Um, just like I use the vest because I like to do less exercise and accomplish more, I use the, the vibration platform for that same reason. There's another vibration platform developed by a professor right at the University in Binghamton, New York, right here. And that platform, you hardly know you're on it. It's a very low amplitude, very low up and down. It's been successful in building bone in turkeys and in children with cerebral palsy. It hasn't been so successful with postmenopausal women. However, the research goes on, and I do think there's some inkling that in particularly thin women, it may be helpful. Later, I can explain that, why, why that would be. But again, if you're using any vibration platforms, be sure to get back to me. Let me know how it's coming along. Those are the questions on exercise. Then there's a couple questions on bone strength. How do you measure bone strength outside of the bone density test? This is a comment by Cheryl. She said she loved my blog uh, on being thin but strong. However, she wanted to know, do we know the key components of assessing bone quality? Being a slender woman who is encouraged to take medicine, I would love to know my bone quality. You know, it's interesting that they're working on techniques to measure bone quality. There's actually a probe called osteoprobe that they just stick in. It hits the bone and they measure how easily the bone dents in. That's in research stage. It's not available just yet, and I'm not sure it's going to, I don't know how it'll turn out. But there is one thing else they're working on, which is called a trabecular bone score, where they take the bone density test. And even though they can't see trabecular bone, they can't see the strength of it, The they can see certain how of those layers of the bone. Trabecular bone is a spongy bone as opposed to the outer hard bone. And there's some way that they're calculating how those layers of trabecular bone look and hoping that that will indicate bone strength. In the meantime, you know, I follow the Koreans who had a very interesting piece of research looking at muscle mass and muscle area. And it turned out that the more muscle area a person had, the greater their bone density and the greater their bone strength. So for now, I'd say... It's a very good thing to know that we build and we lose bone and muscle together. So let's look at the bone strength. Let's build bone strength. If you're a thin woman, thin woman, maybe they say you've got low bone density, but you're strong, that is a very important thing. And then again, look at multiple risk factors, anything else that might be going on. We have a whole document on the medical test that help look for risk factors. You can find it on the website and look for any possible secondary causes, and do every step of the Better Bones, Better Body program. So it, there, there will be new things coming along to measure bone strength, but for now I pay attention to muscle strength. There is a question here from Alan. I was wondering if you were aware that the DEXA bone density scan machines, do they have different scan modes? Thin, regular, and thick. Someone told me this, the selecting the right mode is supposed to compensate for variation in bone size. Well, that would be very interesting. 
And those computers are complex, but today, as I understand it, they do not compensate for bone size, nor do they really compensate for weight. The one exception I have seen or heard about is that the lunar device, when they're looking not at T-score, but at Z-score, where they compare you to people your own age, that they do calculate in the weight. You see bone size is very important because the bone density measurement is largely dependent on area. It really doesn't measure density. It's more an aerial measurement. One day those machines will be replaced with a way to measure bone strength, but for now it's what we have. A couple of questions on Forteo. Diana writes, are there any reports of Forteo causing calcification of the aortic valve? Since taking it to the maximum amount of time, which is two years, I am having heart issues and been told that I have a significant calcification of the main heart valve. Well, you know, Diana, I, I, there are many side effects to Forteo, but I looked, I looked up, is it possible that Forteo would cause arterial calcification? And from the research, I can see it's not a likely thing. In fact, some scientists try to argue that Forteo can help with arterial calcification. So no, I would pay really good attention to my diet. There's a series of nutrients that can help. Uh, certainly the vitamin K, the MK7 that we encourage for bone, really is documented to be a turnoff switch to uh, arterial to calcification of the arteries. And also liquid kaolic has been found to be helpful. Uh, now again, I don't have the right to treat or diagnose anything, but I would say check out. There are some natural things to do and some great dietary changes you can make along with exercise to help with that arterial calcification. The other comment about Forteo was from Amy, who was kind of concerned. Um, she, in essence, said that the Forteo given to the, given to the rats that was found to cause cancer was much higher dose than given to humans. Um, I don't know, I don't know the exact details of how much higher dose. Uh, she cites from three to sixty times. And she says, is it really fair or is it relevant to compare that to humans? Well, the point is if the consumer should be informed of any risk, even if it's a, a, a risk amongst rats that happens only occasionally with high dose any of any therapy. However, I must say I was in a I was at international bone meetings a few years ago when the first case of a death associated with Forteo was discovered. So the black box warning on Forteo is, is valid in that a few unfortunate people have uh, succumbed to that therapy. However, most people are perfectly fine with it. I've seen many clients who are perfectly fine. Um, if you're using it, don't worry. Take care of yourself. Do every step of the bone building program in addition. But know that these warnings... Uh, are, are justified because rare incidents of problems do occur. Okay, we have some questions on calcium. The first question is from Janet. She says, I've heard taking calcium pills too close to milk or coffee intake breaks down the absorption of calcium. Is that true? Well, there's probably a couple issues here. One is if you drink a lot of coffee, it would cause you to excrete calcium in the urine, but that's a lot of coffee. So if you just have one coffee with a high dairy diet or with your supplement, I don't think it's going to be a problem. And the issue of taking a lot of calcium at once, like taking your calcium supplements and then maybe having some milk and some yogurt and whatever, cheese, it's probably true that you can only absorb a certain amount of calcium at one time, and, and they, the figure they're tossing around is 500 milligrams. So I would separate my calcium uh, supplements certainly during the day, and I would separate if I had high calcium meals, I would, might put the supplement off to another time, the calcium supplement. It's only I think it's a minor loss that you would get in absorption, but it's possible if you take more than 500 milligrams of calcium at one time. Um, another calcium-related question is from Fenella, who says, my bone density was 2.4, above the mean, uh, so I presume that she was just barely osteopenia. I'm 76, but have a history of spine problems with calcium deposits on the vertebra. What can I do to stop calcium depositing on the vertebral bodies? Calcium deposits are often a part of arthritis, but they can also be a part of bone spurs. 
Um, the first thing I would do, of course, is to do an alkaline diet.